suspicions. Um, you have to have, companies have to have a certain number or a certain percentage of their employees that are minority or, you know, women. So they're, they're forced to, so you have the idea. It's, kind of, it's supposed to make up for all this inequality throughout history, especially the racism about black people. And I mean, that's, that's basically the idea behind the firm of action. Maybe you want to add something to that? Yeah, the, uh, you, were, you asked me about, you said you may want to ask me about Title IX. Yeah, Title IX. There we go. That's perfect. In 1965, the federal government, in the United States, we are a federalist system, so the states have more uh, rights to self-government, perhaps, than the oblasts. Am I saying that correct? Mm -hmm. than, than they have here. So the way I understand it, anyways. They would be more like your semi-autonomous, probably our states would be closer to the semi-autonomous areas like Crimea and uh, what's the other one? That, that have a little more direct control. Federal government has no role in education. But in 1965, when we were, things were changing rather rapidly, we decided that there would be something called the Elementary and Secondary Education Act that any money coming from the federal government to support the states in their education would have some requirements. One of those requirements, that they, it's a whole law and then there's these various titles, as they would say, parts of the law. One of the parts of the law is there has to be equal opportunity for males and females in everything. And one of the most controversial parts of that was sports. If you are a high school with children, say, from 14 to 18, a middle school, any school, university, and you have a sports program, football, basketball, any of the other sports running, you have to have equal numbers of openings for females and males. Now males, as a group, tend to be more involved in sports than women. So one of the controversies that came up with this is we found we had to, you know, it costs money to, to run a sports program, to run a, to have a football field, to have a referee, to maintain everything. But to get equal numbers, we had to cut some of our sports. We had to say some of our sports just weren't allowed. We said some of our sports were boys. We just couldn't afford because we had to give the, the coaches and the facilities for the girls. And that's still creating an issue, a problem. So is it completely equal? Or are we biologically equal? Uh, we're biologically different, and, and most of us think that's, that's a very good thing. But the... If the girls don't want to go out for sports, do we have to maintain that? We do have to maintain that. I mean, that that's the law. But that's not necessarily the way that some of us would, would, would feel is the way it should be. It should be everybody that wants to participate should be able to participate. And if it's just by chance, it's more men than women, then, then I would think then that would be the way to go. But that's, it's not the way it is. That, that's affirmative action. And that's where we use the law to get girls more athletically involved, and I understand that part. You know, um, when you talk about looking at advertisements of beautiful women, health is a, a big aspect of it. When you know the, the need to to consider who will be the the father of your children, the mother of your children, you want somebody very healthy, and sports are a way to health, and health is very very important. So I just throw that out there and say, uh, do, do you have anything like that here? Do you have anything where you have to have as many men or as many women in sports as you do men? Or is that more of a choice at the university and below? Well, actually, we do have some uh, football teams for women and men, but they are separate, as I know. So there are some sports for girls, usually in gymnastics, I don't know. But uh, some, but there is tendency to for women to go in for men's sport like sport like football, basketball, and they have their own team just uh -huh. separate from men. 
Do you have the same number of women in those teams as the same number of, if you take all the women's teams? Oh, no, just mm -hmm. all the women's mm -hmm. teams. If you take all the gymnastics and all the women's football and all the women's basketball and compare them to all the men's football and all the men's basketball and all the men's uh, running, running games, will they be equal? But I know that we uh, all the, there is no just football for men and women in one team. Mm -hmm. just separate. Mm -hmm. yeah, affirmative action is highly controversial. Like I personally have mixed feelings on it. To the extent they're trying to correct past justices, injustices, and the fact that a lot of top companies had unofficial policies where it's just we're not going to hire women for certain positions. Now they came in and saying, they can't do that, you have to. But should, should they say you have to? You have to. You have to have so many people in these sort of positions. Do you think that's right? Do you think that's a law that would work well here in the Ukraine? Something that forces companies and schools and the government to have actually, because that's what we're talking about, equality. So this would be equal. You know, you know there's controversy about it, but in theory it sounds nice. You know, you have equal numbers Shouldn't we all be equal? I mean, shouldn't we have equal numbers of male CEOs, equal numbers? And if the companies aren't going to do it, should we mandate them? Should we force them to do it? And that can come down to a question of gender equality. Yes. Well, speaking about uh, affirmative action uh, taken by the government, for example, in some countries, um, uh, in the structure of their parliament, uh, there is a certain, certain percentage of um, of uh, people in the government that should be women. And I think uh, it, it has a good effect on the quality of the parliament because um, having women in the structure of the parliament um, is good for several several reasons. For example, they, um, well, uh, they bring attention to some issues that, um, that could be uh, left without attention by men. For example, adoption or some kind of this. Well, it's just uh, uh, it provides a, it provides a different view on every pro on each problem, and that's why it is usable and it's good. Yeah, and I mean, I, so I'd like to hear some other opinions about that. I mean, in, that's a good example right there. It's an attempt, sort of, by people who vote for the government to reshape society. If society is going to crawl along and have slowly changing gender stereotypes. We're just going to say, no, we're not going to, you know, bother with that. We're just going to say, boom, it has to be half and half. It has to be totally equal right now. And if it had some problems in the beginning, they'll be worked out in 50 years or 100 years or something like that. And then we'll have total equality and all the viewpoints, women's viewpoints, you know, minority viewpoints, will be on equal levels with everybody else's viewpoints. And therefore, the society should be representative. Like the Congress of the United States. 17% uh, or what, what is the number together? 17, but is it, no, 17 percent. I thought it, 17 percent total mm -hmm. in the Congress, but 17 percent of the American population is a lot more than 17 percent of the population that are women. So is the women's viewpoints really coming across? And I don't know about the example you're talking about, but I think the numbers are what's like 51, 49, United States, 51 percent women? There, there are more women than men for for a couple of reasons, Mo mainly because women as a group live longer than men as a group. So if we take <laughs> total, you know, just this, a good 45 years longer, that, that makes the difference. Yeah. But in the Congress, you don't have 51% women and you don't have 49% men. Yeah. But you know, I have a question too, and, and coming up to your, to your point about mothers, uh, part of our, our gender difference is, is explained, our wage difference is that mothers are they're out for a while. Do you think men as a group, if told as children that they will be fathers raising children while mothers, well the, the woman is out to work, would they do as good a job raising children as women traditionally do? No? I think they will. I think they would? Yeah. We are We are trained that the women are.